So here's a fun little puzzle. We're given that x plus y equals 1 and x cubed plus y cubed equals 7. The question asks us to find x times y. Now, you might be tempted to solve for x and y individually, but there's actually a much more elegant approach that sidesteps that entirely. The key insight is to work with what we've got. Let's start by unpacking that sum of cubes using a classic algebraic identity. You might remember this identity from algebra, a cubed plus b cubed factors as a plus b times the quantity a squared minus a times b plus b squared. Applying this to our problem, x cubed plus y cubed becomes x plus y times the quantity x squared minus xy plus y squared. And here's where things get interesting. We already know that x cubed plus y cubed is 7 and x plus y is 1. So we can substitute those values right in. 7 equals 1 times the quantity x squared minus xy plus y squared. Of course, multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything, so we can drop that factor. This gives us 7 equals x squared minus xy plus y squared. Notice we now have one equation with two unknowns, x squared plus y squared and x times y. If we could express the first in terms of the second, we'd be golden. So the question becomes, how do we connect x squared plus y squared with x times y? Well, there's another algebraic identity that's perfect for this. The expansion of a plus b quantity squared. It gives us a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. This is exactly what we need to bridge the gap. So x plus y quantity squared equals x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Since x plus y equals 1, we have 1 squared equals x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, which simplifies to 1 equals x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. Now we can solve for that x squared plus y squared term. Subtracting 2xy from both sides, we get x squared plus y squared equals 1 minus 2xy. Perfect. This is our bridge between the two expressions. Now comes the satisfying part. We can substitute this bridge back into our original equation. Remember, we had 7 equals x squared minus xy plus y squared. Let me rearrange this slightly for clarity. Now, I'll replace this x squared plus y squared term with our bridge expression, 1 minus 2xy. So 7 equals 1 minus 2xy minus xy. Notice how everything now depends only on xy. Combining the xy terms, negative 2xy minus xy gives us negative 3xy. So 7 equals 1 minus 3xy. Subtracting 1 from both sides gives us 6 equals negative 3xy. Dividing both sides by negative 3, we get xy equals negative 2. There we have it. Now, you might be wondering whether such values of x and y actually exist. It's worth checking that our answer isn't just algebraically correct, but also corresponds to real numbers. We know that x plus y equals 1 and x times y equals negative 2. These are exactly the sum and product of the roots of some quadratic equation. Remember, if we have a quadratic with roots x and y, it takes the form t squared minus the sum of the roots times t plus the product of the roots, all equal to 0. Plugging in our values, we get t squared minus 1 times t plus negative 2 equals 0 which simplifies to t squared minus t minus 2 equals 0. This factors nicely. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to give negative 2 and add to give positive 1. Those numbers are 2 and negative 1, giving us t minus 2 times t plus 1 equals 0. 
So our roots are t equals 2 and t equals negative 1. This means x and y are 2 and negative 1, in some order. Since these are real numbers, our answer is definitely valid. And that's how you can find the product without finding the individual values. If you enjoyed this problem and the approach we used, I'd appreciate it if you could give this video a like and consider subscribing for more mathematical insights like this one. Thanks for watching.